Um, I'm actually here presenting a talk that was done by Michael Dexter um, at Asia BSCCon. These are his slides. I'll probably stumble a little bit in a couple spots. The use of smart on new modern raw hard drives um, is everybody knows smart lies to us. It's a little bit different um, in implementations between different hardware vendors. It's different in what it will provide you. But uh, this talk is basically to cover some of those materials and, and where we are with SMART today. Um, Michael is proposing that we build a new framework for use in SMART. We currently don't have anything in FreeBSD that really does much with SMART. Um, and we'll cover some of that. The current technologies are that we have many different layers from many different vendors that don't cooperate with each other very well. Um, we get storage devices from one vendor, we get controllers from another vendor, we get partitioning from Kirk or somebody else that would run a file system on top of. So it gets a little bit dicey in that you've got a lot of different pieces that are going to have to work together. The, the disk do drink, um, speaks part to uh, the hardware. Some of your laptops or desktop machines at BIOS boot time will attempt to go out and read smart data from the drive and go, oh no, your drive's no good, I don't want to boot. Um, and they also do IOs for us, which is very important. The smart, for those that don't know, is a self-monitoring and reporting technology that was added sometime around ATA version 3. Um, and this is kind of what it goes like if you're going to try to talk smart with a drive. You kind of go out and go, how are you doing, drive? And it comes back and spits a bunch of garbage at you. Um, it's, it's a, for the most part, it's a large table with a bunch of different values that some of are not guaranteed to be consistent across the different vendors. The more formatted version of that data looks like a table that we have some strings to that, that give us threshold value, thresholds that are numbers that if we're actually below it, it indicates we have a problem. Um, and that value needs to be scaled by some f of x to get to what that value is. It's not, not real clear what f of x may be for a different vendor's drive and that where we, how, how fast are we approaching the problem that Smart's trying to tell us about. Um, the most common thing that people use today to look at smart data is the smart mount tool package. Um, it's very good at reading these outputs and formatting them in at least a human readable form. Um, there is an ATA control utility that exists in OpenBSD and NetBSD that does much of the, of the same thing. Um, I don't know that the, these tools have any type of long-term monitoring daemon like smart mount tools does. Everybody that's interested in smart data is pretty much using smart one tools. It's available on all the platforms, just like GROF is. It's used everywhere. Um, but do we, are we doing that voluntarily? Is it something that we really, I mean, it's one of the only things out there, so is, is it the only choice in the market? And it has some definite advantages. Um, it's available on all the operating systems, like I said. It supports the SCSI drives. It supports SATA drives. Um, it has a huge table of vendor-specific data. Um, I wouldn't want to recreate that data by collecting it from the hardware vendors. Um, it has the smart monitoring daemon that I mentioned, and it has the ability to implement some commands um, that are, are basic and or longer-term hard drive testing commands. Basically, what I'm talking about there, for those that know smart, are the um, short drive test and the long drive test. Um, and it's, of course, it's familiar by widespread use. Everybody's using it. Um, it also has some disadvantages. One of these came up during the, the, oh, almost lost that, the developer summit and that we're trying to move away from GPL code. Um, they're actually, a, I believe, a target goal for version 12 of FreeBSD to eliminate the GPL code in the base. Um, Smart Mon Tools is a GPL utility, so we're not going to be importing that. Um, it has limited formatting outputs that basically you can't really change the way Smart One talks to you. You might stick it through Ocker, Grep, or SAD, or, and do something with it, but you're basically stuck with 
the can text output. Um, it isn't a library. Like I said, you're going to call the utility and, and deal with textual output. It didn't have support for NVM, I believe that was about, about three or four weeks ago. That's been added, so they can actually deal with the NVM drives now. Um, the acoustic management commands and some of the security commands are not supported by SmartMon. I don't know if you can do a secure erase using SmartMon. Um, and for some people, that's a pretty important access that you need to get to. Um, it doesn't, it, it, you, do, you don't have direct ability to deal with storage bus operations, and that's more of a CAM control. Um, it used to be ATA control, but we don't have that anymore, type layer issue. Um, it, it doesn't support the eject command for, for um, CD-ROM drives and some other stuff. And it, it doesn't have test unit ready for, for SCSI devices, which you might want in scripting um, to make sure a unit's ready before you go blast some, some commands at it. It doesn't support raw CCBs. Um, that's available through CAM control? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with virtual disk. And that's, um, well, why do you even want to talk about smart on virtual disk? And we'll get into that a little later in the talk. There's um, some environments where you may actually want to be able to access smart through a virtual layer. Um, the ATA control utility that exists in some of the other BSDs is of course, has a BSD license on it, so it's, it's readily usable. Um, it has support for the acoustic management commands, um, which are pretty universal from my understanding. Um, it can terminate the simple and the, the extended smart test, um, and it has support for the smart um, security features. I guess it's not, it's not per se a smart feature, but the secure erase is supported. Um, and it has support to turn on the right cache on the drive, which I'm, is, is not available in, in smart, or in smart mod tools. It has a lot of disadvantages as well. Um, it's, it's, it was removed from the FreeBSD system. It was deprecated, I believe, along with you running a cam. Um, caused some issues there that the ATA controller was, or the ATA control was doing things that were not healthy to the way that cam was trying to operate. Um, making it difficult to try and bring that code forward. Um, it doesn't have any information about the, the vendor-specific stuff that's going on in the drive, um, which unfortunately is a, is a, a hard problem. There's a, it's a huge amount of data. Um, it doesn't have any. It didn't have any way to output um, different formats. Um, it wasn't a library. It was just a statically linked executable. It doesn't have any support for NVM, of course, because it was deprecated before we had even an NVM driver. Um, at the present time, I don't know if the NetBSD or OpenBSD projects have added NVM support to it. Um, that may be coming. It doesn't have support for SCSI test unit ready. Um, it doesn't have the ability to deal con control blocks. And it... Um, I looked at some of the, of the version, different versions of ATA control, and it was actually trying to issue smart commands before, the, before validating that the drive was capable of doing smart. And so that's just really a bug in the code that needs to be addressed and, and fixed. So the expansion of GROF was caused by, by Mandoc. It kind of, everybody uses this everywhere. So Michael's idea here is that we build a similar solution to be used by everybody for the um, smart layer of, of hard drives. Um, mainly because the current environment is the disadvantages are way, way outweighing what we have for advantages. Um, this started evidently with a tweet between him and um, Gil Gwynn and of OpenBSD and he, and he asked if if a certain tool could do this, and the, the result was, was that it actually could. So that was where Michael decided to, to, to start down this walk. The, um, so we put down the keyboard, we reached out, and, 
and ask what the requirements would be for doing this. And one of the first ones that came up was, well, we need an, o we need an open source tool that, that has some friendly license on it um, so we can get away from the smart mod. Um, we wanted to fix the limited output of it that was available from the current tools by adding an extensible framework that would allow us to output information in hex, uh, human readable form, JSON, XML, whatever you want, shell variables if you're, if you're trying to script your stuff in shell. Um, ZFS does a very good job of this. Um, its interface is, is um, in a way that it makes it easy to use it in other tools when you're getting statistics out of ZFS. So if we can, we want to make it a library. So ZF, ZFS's statistical interface is built as a library so that you can easily route tools around it. Um, uh oh, looks like I got a sequence error here. Um, oh, this is the, yeah. There's an additional item here about how do you recognize if if. One of the things SmartMon tries, tries to do is you can scan for devices. Well, in implementing something like that, how do we reliably recognize whether we're talking to a ATA drive, a SCSI disk, or an NVMe? Because the way that you deal with errors and or smart type stuff with those drives is very different. Um, it doesn't make it trivial. And, and simply leaving yourself with a manual override. The inability to deliver um, raw command and control box, we can do that with cam control. That was the right name of the tool. This is how you speak smart to a um, ATA disk using cam control, using raw control blocks. Um, it's not very pretty. It's pretty painful. If you get a bit or a byte wrong somewhere, you have a pretty serious problem. Um, Fortunately, the worst one is secure erase, and you're not likely to hit that. Um, uh, go ahead, Mark. Well, there's definitely some that can put the drive offline for a long enough time that if it, it were a critical file system, it would it would cause you some grief. Um, the evidently, John Baldwin asked some things about, well, why not use something like a CCB dump, just like TCP dump does, so that we can look at the raw CCBs going around down in the bottom layers of CAM. Um, some interesting data can be gleaned from that way. You're not going to get smart data, because currently there isn't anything that's passing smart CCBs around that's asking the drive to do that. Um, and the other one was, was, if we do something like that, like TCP dump, is how do you do the filtering on whether you're doing a read request or write request? whether you're doing some other weird things. And, and Warner could probably tell me more about that because he's been playing in the cam lab recently. <laughs> the, uh, the inability to support virtual disk. Well, why would you even want to support a virtual disk? I mean, you're supposed to be presented a virtual machine with a perfect disk that doesn't have any flaws on it that's going to have really good performance, supposedly. Well, what if you're using a cloud provider and you want to know if his disk, his disk backing store is really providing what you're paying for? And are there any ways to um, modify the virtualization driver layer? Um, we're talking about para-virtualization para here to get something like smart or even get smart data through it. The other one that comes up is what about the home lab environment where I'm building a machine that is dealing through a virtual layer and talking to a physical hard drive. And I'm trying to do hard drive diagnostics. Or I'm trying to develop hard drive tools. Or I'm trying to write something like SmartMon in a virtualized environment. And I can't talk smart to the hard drive anymore because the virtualization gets in my way. So there might, there's, there's some interest in, in implementing some things there. Um, what, what does SMART look like? Beehive currently, if you try and pass SMART through it, it's not going to give you anything. It's going to give you a perfect drive that has no SMART data behind it. And you know, do we give it synthetic values? Do we give it some statistics about the backing store? Um, these are all questions that, that people are going to need to answer. I don't have the answers for them. Um, do we give it the worst status of all the devices, the worst status of of 
any device? And what about pool redundancy? Is if, if, if there's a drive behind the pool that got bad smart data, do we really care if it's in a redundant pool? You know, it's not going to affect it. Um, what about collecting large amounts of data? Um, what are you gonna, how, how are you going to deal with, with trying to deal with smart data from 90, 100, 900 um, drives? Are you going to cache it? Are you going to send it? Are you going to send it to, to syslog? Are you going to use some external logging tools to analyze that data? Um, you think it's about somebody like Yahoo or Google or any of those people that have huge arrays? What are they doing with their smart data? What, what can be done with it? There's um, some other ways to deal with hard drive failures and errors that don't even involve smart. Um, looking at controller resets um, compared to the host, con the, the number of times that the host resets, um, and look at see, to see if you have odd rates there. Might be one way to collect some data. Um, hopefully those two are, stay one to one. And what can we detect today with in-base tools? There's some stuff that uh, I can believe, believe you can do with D-Trace to look at um, hard drive latencies. And if you're seeing a sudden um, escalation in hard drive latencies, you, you can presume that the drive is probably either remapping sectors or having problems reading those specific sectors that's, that's interesting to you. Um, from smart, you can get things like service hours. Most of the vendors, I think, are ex anymore extremely consistent on what they report for the, how long the drive's been running, pow power on hours. Um, temperatures, there's more than, than one temperature that you get from most drives. You get some historical data. Um, I forgot to bring it with me today, but I have a drive that actually has a um, failed in past condition that was caused by a historical high temperature. The drives are recording that type of data. It's available to us. Um, what you do with that data, I'm not sure. I mean, if a drive failed in the past, is it important to me today? Um, type thing. The reallocated and pending sector counts are probably the two most interesting smart data that people want to look at. These, um, the reallocated sector counts gives you an indication of how much the drive has had to relocate sectors because it has some problem reading or writing to a specific area. The pending count, is, a, is another very interesting one because it's a, by design, it should, if it finds a spot it doesn't like on the drive, it says, okay, this is pending until I can read the data from it. And supposedly, if you successfully read the data from it, a remap operation will occur and, and the pending count will go down. Well, and SMART doesn't always do that for us, but it, watching the pending count can be a good indicator that a drive may be starting to develop a problem. The latency climb I talked about just a minute ago, frequently when you see that you've got maybe eight hours to react, you may have as short as one hour to react, you may have a lifetime to react because it may be a transient condition that's not anything to do with the hard drive having long-term storage issues. There's, there's a YouTube video out there of somebody screaming into an array full of hard drives that drives the drive latency through the roof. That's caused by vibration. Drives just fine. It's just trying to deal with the fact that at seven micron distances between cylinders, just a little bit of vibration causes head tracking issues. And um, so you may get data from a drive that is actually meaningless as far as long-term failures go. The current, like I said, I believe D-Trace can detect the, the latency climb. I think there's actually some one-liner scripts or short scripts that can collect um, data. I think Warner didn't some of the scheduling stuff collect extensive latency data on reads and, reads and writes through the... Per device. Yeah. Okay. So and that, uh, yeah, okay. Right. 
Yeah, that's the indication that you've, your latency is quiet. Um, and with that data, what you're trying to do is predict failure. That's what SMART's about, is trying to, to hopefully predict the drive failure before it becomes a critical failure. Um, so that you can schedule maintenance and hopefully fix it. This is a, we're not attached to the disk control name. It's just a proposal. This is a proposal of some of the types of commands that would be implemented. Um, you know, t t uh, getting the, the, the smart data table, which is the main amount of information you want out of it, turning the LED on or off so you can identify what drive it is that you're getting bad data from. Um, the ability to issue a raw command control block like cam control does, or, or raw CCB like cam control does. Um, the ability to possibly to turn on the device's um, <coughs> TCP dump-like functionality, because I don't think you want to have that on all the time, but to be able to, to turn that on so that you can start reading CCBs from a TCP, or a, I guess it would be a CCP dump u utility. Um, get reset counts, eject the drive, which is, is currently a hard thing to do. The the next steps are what are the pain points for the current developer community and the user community that has to do with smart? I mean, is, is uh, where are we seeing problems? What are the current strategies being used to deal with hard drive failure and to deal with smart in itself? And what your feedbacks are and what your encouragements are for, the, for this group that's working on this to go forward with. And thank you. Yeah. Are there are there any questions? Great. The man page. Yeah, we need we need a lot more feedback from the developer community and the user community and what they would like to see in a tool. Um, basically, we're trying to replace the functionality that Smart is providing without a GPL license. Is, is really the target. Um, and to get something that we can include in base. So, yes? You mentioned earlier about the smart box huge database of vendor information. Is there any thought about how we're going to kind of be able to get the top of those? Correct. So, how we're going to deal with that aspect of it, that's not really the problem. Right. A large amount of that data is is device-specific quirks, and that you have to do some odd things to certain devices. Fortunately, a large amount of that are legacy devices. So some of it, we may be able to greatly reduce the workload by going, look, we're only going to take and deal with data about ATA7 or newer devices. And that, you don't have to deal with a huge amount of devices. And by ATA7 or 8, the specifications and how vendors were doing it became clear enough that the amount of the data that's created for that problem is much smaller. Yeah. Most, most of it has to deal, deal with um, vendor-specific um, table entries in the, in the smart line data, and especially with the SSDs and now the NVMs, is there are a million new parameters. And NVM is actually going to make that table grow and the need for it to grow because different vendors are going to re report different things about um, how well the drive is doing on on lifetime, um, the solid state drives have much more data in that area about how many times I've rewritten certain blocks and those blocks are getting close to their end of life. Um, so that, that's, but I suspect that we can downsize that data. Sure. It means some drops of, of legacy support, yeah. Right, yeah, that's, that's in there. It hasn't specifically been addressed. Um, we all know that doing things behind ZFS back is, is a very bad idea, and what occurs now is the controller layer um, on a failing drive um, can cause a retry issue, and the drive may take a long time for ZFS to recognize that it's gone. Um, Smart may be able to provide, if ZFS can be taught about Smart and how to get Smart data, it may be able to proactively go, this drive is getting bad, let's get it out of the pool. Go ahead, go, go ahead and, and throw it out and bring in the new hot swap support that's been added, which would be really, really proactive. 
Warner. Yes, that, that's, that's a very serious problem. The, I'm not advocating that we go look at smart data anything more than maybe once a day. Um, and the, the other thing would be to use some of the more proactive, um, non-smart type um, data collection to decide if ZFS should take a drive offline, and particularly the latency response of a drive, or use that to trigger a probe for, has the smart data changed? Um, is, is the drive seeing something going on? Turn it back. I don't have an insight as to what's going on there without looking at the specific instance. I have some ideas about what might be occurring. But, um, yes. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, so you. Yeah, I'll, I'll get with you, and, and I would like to see what you've done. Um, so you, you have implemented a CCB dump. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Uh, okay. Real good way to test the ZFS yeah, exactly. failover mechanism. Interesting. So that was one of the interesting things I actually wanted to test. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have a bit of a What time today? Uh, it's at uh, 3.45 and uh, 1.19 a.m. Okay. Am I done? I can quit listening to an echo. Well, I keep moving. I find better spots. Okay. Thank you.